right in. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin. Speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castiles. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guest, Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Cash, Felix Mills and his orchestra, and the Swan Ted. Now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. <laughs> Well, it's early evening, and George is just stopping in at the corner cigar store on his way home from the office. Evening, Joe. I'll take a half a dozen cigars, please. Sure thing, Mr. Burns. Usual kind? Sure. I wouldn't smoke anything but Perfecto Royales. Here's your money, Joe. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Burns, but the price on Perfecto Royales has gone up. What, again? I'm afraid so. From now on, you get only two for nickel. Okay, here's another dime. Great little cigar, this. Got a light, Joe? Uh, look, Mr. Burns, I've asked you a few times. Please don't smoke them things in here. They smell up the place something awful. <laughs> okay, I kind of like the aroma myself. Well, George Burns. Eddie Canada. Hi, Eddie. George, so this is the place you buy those secret weapons you smoke. <laughs> Eddie, please, these happen to be very fine cigars. Oh, sure. You walk through Los Angeles smoking those things and a poor innocent rubber factory gets all the blame. <laughs> Not true. Here, just try one of them. No, thanks. I can't smoke that stuff. Let's have my own brand, Joe. As a quarter. Thank you, Mr. Cantor. Here's your ten cigars. <laughs> It's going up again, huh? <laughs> well, well, so we both smoke Perfecto Royales. I huh? guess so. What makes them smell like that when you smoke them, George? <laughs> I use very cheap matches. Oh. <laughs> well, how's everything, George? Is uh, Gracie okay? Oh, sure. How is the sex step from Canter? <laughs> Fine. I'm a bachelor these days, you know. I'd have took the girls on a little trip to the Mojave Desert. It's hot and dusty, and there's nothing out there but an army camp. Ida must be crazy to take the girls to the Mojave Desert. George, Ida knows what she's been doing. Those boys haven't seen a girl for six months. <laughs> Boy, you're really anxious to get those girls married, aren't you? Are you kidding? If a man will marry one of them, I'll throw in another one as a cook. <laughs> I'll see you later, George. I'm starving. I'm going over to the restaurant and get myself some dinner. Huh? Restaurant? Oh, no, Eddie. You come home and have dinner with me. Oh, George, I wouldn't think of it. Food is a problem these days. Don't be silly. Gracie's a wonderful manager. Our icebox is loaded. No, thanks, George, but I wouldn't dream of it. Now, Eddie... No, would... George, really. But I'm sure that Positively it's... no, George. Well, okay. George, don't give up like that. Argue with me. Argue with me. <laughs> You, uh, you mean you will come? Certainly, I can be handled. Well, swell, swell, let's go. Gracie will be tickled to see you. Good, I'll be glad. Put the packages right on the sofa, Bill. Okay, Gracie. Oh, it was awfully sweet of you to give me a lift home from downtown. My goodness, I was surprised when a car drove up and a man whistled at me and it turned out to be you. <laughs> Not half as surprised as I was, Gracie, when it turned out to be you. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'd ask you to stay to dinner, Bill, but I haven't a bit of food in the house. No food at all? Mm -hmm. But George will probably stop on the way home and pick up something. Yeah, maybe. Hello, darling. Hello, sweetheart. Well, hiya, George. Well, well hi, Eddie. Look, Gracie, I've got a surprise for you, dear. I brought Eddie Cantor home for dinner. Oh, George, we couldn't meet an old friend. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I brought Eddie home to enjoy one of your home-cooked meals. Uh-huh. You did? Oh, well, yeah, those restaurants are getting me down. The owner of one place even told me to get out and never come back. Why do you do that? I offended the help. You see, the waiter spilled hot soup in my lap, and when I carelessly jumped up... 
some of it splashed on the bus boy, didn't we? <laughs> well, your worries are over, Eddie. We'll give you a, a real fee tonight, won't we, Grace? <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, George, can I see you in the kitchen a minute? Okay, sweetheart. George Burns, are you out of your mind? Huh? There's not a bit of food in this house, and you bring home Eddie Cannon who eats like a horse. <laughs> He doesn't eat so much. Oh, no. He's so full of food that his eyes pop out. Now, <laughs> take it easy, honey. If there's nothing in the house, just slip over to the market and buy something. Well, I'd be glad to if you'll just slip over to Washington and get some ration stamps from Mrs. Rosell. <laughs> Gee, are they all gone? Well, yes. And even if we had points, our butcher wouldn't have any meat. He's completely out of it. Well, he must have something. You think so, huh? Well, what did we eat last night? Oxtails. There you are, he... Come to the end of the ox. <laughs> we we must have some canned food. What's in the pantry? Cobwebs. <laughs> Wait, I've got it. Bill Goodwin is a single guy, and he eats out a lot. Maybe he can spare some ration for Stan. Well, ask him. He's in there talking to Eddie. No, Eddie, no. Oh, but Bill... No, Eddie, I'm sorry. But they're so beautiful, and you can have your pick of any of the five. <laughs> hey, Bill, can I see you in the kitchen? Just a minute, George. Now, Bill... No, Eddie, why don't you talk to Harry Von Zell? Oh, that Von Zell. I invited him to my house for dinner, left him alone with my daughters, turned the lights down low. Yeah? He told them about Ipana. <laughs> Oh, that stupid man. You said it. I'll bet you wouldn't do that, huh, Bill? Well, of course not. I'd tell him about Swan Soap. Oh, huh? well, sure. I'd tell him that Swan's the new white floating soap. There's four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, for bathing the baby, for dishes and for light laundry. Four swell soaps in one. Bill, can I see you for a second? Just a minute, George. Look, Bill. You're alone with a girl. The lights are low. You put your arms around her waist. Draw her close. Pucker up your lips. Yeah. Is that any time to tell her about soap? You know, you're right, Eddie. That's the time for action. Sure. So I take her out to the kitchen and show her how Swan works. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll show her what a job it does on dishes and how it gives you loads of suds. And I'll remind her that with Swan in the dishpan, you don't have to worry about your hands. Swan helps keep them from getting rough and red. Bill, please, in the kitchen. It's very important. Take him, take him. That guy's got so much soap on the brain, he'll wind up marrying a bubble dancer. <laughs> no, sir, only if her bubble is from Swan's soap. Oh, Scram, get out of here. <laughs> well, gee whiz, Swan is a great wartime buy. Come on, Bill. Look, Bill, we're in the jam. Have, have you got any ration stamps? Well, I'm sorry, George. I'd like to help you, but I'm all out. Well, that's funny. You never eat at home. Well, no, Gracie, but you see, I buy a lot of food as an investment. You make money with it? Well, who's talking about money? Today, girls fall for my applesauce faster when it's in a can. So long, George. <laughs> well, he was a big help. Now, what do we do? Well, look, Eddie has a large family. He should have some extra stamps. Yeah, but, gee, he's our guest. We can't ask him for stamps. No, but I've got an idea. Come on. Oh, well, Eddie, how's Ida? Oh, she's fine, thanks. She and the girls went down to the desert, you know. Oh, they took their ration books with them, of course. No, no. As a matter of fact, I have them right here in my pocket. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Eddie, it's awfully warm in here. Wouldn't you like to take your coat off? No, I'm quite comfortable. Oh, come on. Let George hang it up for you. Well, if you insist. All right. Here's his coat, dear. You know what to do. <laughs> like people to feel at home here, Eddie. Of course, I wouldn't ask a stranger to take his coat off, but you're different. You mean I'm more like one of the family. No, no, I mean you don't embarrass George. Your shoulders come off with your coat just like his do. Gracie. Yes, dear? Not there. Oh. Uh, Eddie. Uh, yes? Um, are you sure Ida didn't take the books with her? You mean the ration books? Yes. Oh, positive. They're right here in my pants pocket. Oh. <laughs> warm in here. Wouldn't you like to... Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> Our young tenor, Jimmy Cash, and the selection, this lovely ballad that revives memories of the great showboat, Make Believe. 
The game of just supposing is the sweetest game I know. Our dreams are more romantic than the world we see. And if the things we dream about don't happen to be so, that's just an unimportant technicality. We could make believe I love you, only make believe that you love me. George and Gracie found they couldn't get Eddie Cantor's ration book, they went back into the kitchen where they're now trying desperately to dream up a dinner. Oh, George, this is terrible. I simply haven't got a thing for him to eat. Well, don't give up, sweetheart. Isn't there anything cold in the icebox? Well, yes, there is. But do you think ice cubes are nourishing? <laughs> I guess not. Oh, I know. We'll set the clocks back, give him a glass of orange juice, and tell him we eat a late breakfast. <laughs> It wouldn't work even if we had orange juice. Gracie, look around while I go in and keep Eddie from getting suspicious. All right, dear. <laughs> well, Eddie, the home cooking is on the way. Are you getting hungry? Hungry? George, under my belt, is the only vacancy in Los Angeles. <laughs> We'll take care of that, kid. George, I know I'm a fool for asking this. A dreamer with my head in the clouds, but... Is there a candy bar in the house? <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. I knew it. Do you remember the old days when you could step up to a counter and say to the clerk, give me a candy bar, and he'd say, with or without nuts? Yeah. Now you say, give me a candy bar, and he just says, nuts. <laughs> well, take it easy. We'll be eating soon. Oh, getting hungry, Eddie. Yeah. Gracie, there's an awful gnawing in my stomach. Hey, maybe it's your appendix. Oh, instead of having dinner, wouldn't you rather go to a hospital? Gracie, my appendix is out. I had it taken out eight years ago. Oh, really? Well, do you think you should eat a heavy meal so soon after your operation? There's nothing wrong with me. I could eat nails. Oh, Judge, why didn't we think of that? You know, it's always a kick being with you two at that. It brings back the days when we were in Vaudeville together and how different those days were. Yeah. Why, there were times where we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. Seems like old times, doesn't it? Remember the night when there wasn't any food and we ate the parrot and the bird act? <laughs> it was a big green parrot like the one Miss Pringle has next door. Miss Pringle has a parrot? Yes. <laughs> I'll be right back hey, George here. George Burns, come back here. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, I'll get back to my cooking. You entertain Eddie. <laughs> Getting hungry, Eddie? <laughs> Look, was there anything left on your breakfast table this morning? <laughs> Nothing but the morning newspaper. Well, let me have it. If there isn't a picture of Hitler in it, I'll eat it. <laughs> Eddie, I promise you that... Oh, George! George, come into the kitchen. Excuse me. Well? Well, our troubles are over. I found two cans of shrimp in the broom closet. Gee, that's wonderful. Will it be enough? Oh, certainly. We'll have shrimp cocktail, uh, cream of shrimp soup, shrimp salad, fried shrimp, and rhubarb pie. Rhubarb pie? Yeah, but don't be surprised if it tastes like shrimp. 
Okay, I'll get started. Oh, I'll run and give Eddie the good news. Well, cheer up, kid. We'll be eating in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Don't shake it, George. Just bring it to me. <laughs> well, you'll be glad you waited when you get that delicious home-cooked food. I hope Gracie didn't bother with a lot of fancy stuff. You know, I'm the sort of a guy who can eat anything. Well, good. In fact, there's only one thing I can't eat. <laughs> one thing? Just one. Shrimp? How did you know? <laughs> I'll be right back. Hold the shrimp, Gracie. He can't eat it. Well, you stay here. I've got an idea that can't fail. Eddie, a terrible thing happened. What, 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 Gracie? The gas company just turned off our gas. Turned off your gas? Why? Well, George gambled away the gas money. No. Yes. He's weak, Eddie. Gambling is in his blood. Every month he takes the gas money and either rolls pool or shoot tosses. <laughs> George does that? Yes, and the stove is covered with chicken and steaks and tops all for you. But there's no gas to cook them with. I don't suppose you'd save them raw. <laughs> oh, my goodness, no. You and your civilization. <laughs> well, there's only one thing for me to do. Go to a restaurant, huh? No, I'll call the gas company and tell them I'll pay the bill myself. Oh, uh, you get some pretty clever ideas, don't you? I'll call them right now. You, oh, never mind. The gas just came on again. I, I can smell it. Oh, George, my idea didn't work. You go out and stall for a while. Okay. <laughs> Getting hungry, Eddie? <laughs> you miserable heel. Huh? <laughs> Gracie told me how you gamble away the gas money, and that's why we haven't got any dinner. Oh. Oh, is that what Gracie... Yes, yeah, shame on you, George. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a big louse. <laughs> Like gambling is the worst vice a man can have. Gambling is vicious. It's low. It's mean. Yeah, I know. I always lose, too. You lose? <laughs> always. You never win? Never. George, it just happens that I have a pair of dice here in my pocket. Let's discuss this further on our knees. Okay. Just get down here. <laughs> Felix Mills, his orchestra, and the swan set with a vivid sketch of that menacing mile, that bat with the gat known as Pistol Packin' Mama. Yes. Hit me in the leg. I lay that pistol down, babe. I lay that pistol down. The pistol back in my mood. I lay that pistol Something to eat. 
Gracie's girlfriend, Twisty Sagwell, has just arrived with her ration book. Gracie, I rushed over as soon as you called me. Here's my ration book. Oh, thank you, Twisty. That's all right, Gracie. I'm only sorry there are no points in it. <laughs> no points? Well, what happened to them, Twisty? You had a hundred points yesterday. Well, uh, you know the arrangement I have with my butcher. Oh, you mean where he gives you a tip for each extra point you give him? Yeah. Well, this morning I bought some hamburger for two points and just kissed the rat goodbye. <laughs> well, now we're really sunk. I better go in and stall Eddie again. All right, dear. <laughs> Getting hungry, Eddie? <laughs> Getting, he says. I could eat the black keys right off of that piano. You could? Well, not right away. I want to let the white ones digest first. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry about the delay, Eddie. Maybe I shouldn't have invited you up here tonight. Oh, don't be silly, George. It's a pleasure to eat with you and Gracie. The word eat, of course, I use very, very loosely. <laughs> yes, I understand. But at least you and Gracie don't want me to put anybody in pictures. What do you mean? Well, since I became a movie producer, everywhere I go, they drag out the cook, the dog, the kid, and ask me to give them a job. And you don't like that? I hate it. It's the most disgusting. When that happens, I get right up and leave. Even if you're invited to dinner? Absolutely. I'll be right back. <laughs> Gracie, I've got a wonderful idea. Now who did you invite to dinner? Edward Arnold? <laughs> no, no, no. Eddie Cantor is a movie producer now. And it's your chance to get Tootsie here in the picture. Me? Sure. Oh, George, Daddy, it's a wonderful idea. Come on, Tootsie. Oh, come on. <laughs> Eddie. Yeah. Eddie, I've got a marvelous surprise for you. Uh, this is Miss Tootsie Sagwell. Well, bring me a knife and fork, huh? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Shirley Temple. Oh, no. Oh, she'll be wonderful for your new picture. She's a magnificent dramatic actress. Cry, Tootsie. Yes! You see? Please, I would like a bowl of soup. Well, look, dinner will be served right after you sign Tootsie for your picture, and not a minute before. Bring me a fountain pen. Oh, Mr. Candy, you're wonderful. Eddie, they're hounding you. Why don't you walk out? I'm too weak to walk. Here, here, here's the pen. Wait a minute. Not so fast. I know why you're putting this sweet, innocent girl into pictures. You're a wolf. I'm a wolf? You are? Oh, shame on you, Eddie Chandler. And you with five puppies. <laughs> She's right. If you hire Tootsie, you have to hire her mother as a chaperone. She's hired. She's hired. Let's eat. Oh, I'm going to run home and tell Mother the good news. You will have to pay Mother a salary, Mr. Cantor. Now and then, just let her squeeze Charles Colbert. <laughs> At last. Now for the food. Well, all right. Sit down, everybody. <laughs> uh, hungry, Eddie? Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh, oh wait. First, I'll have to light the candles. Got a match there? No, dear. Here, here, here's a match. Oh, no, I couldn't take your matches. You're our guest. Guest, schmest. I'll light them myself. <laughs> there. Well? Uh, George, bring in the food. Me? You bring it in. Oh, we've got company. Blow out the candles. Oh, no. Come in. Well, hi, folks. I just... Oh, excuse me. You're ready to eat dinner. I'll drop back later. Oh, oh no, no, come on, Bill. Bill. We're in no hurry to eat. No, no, no. It's all right. <laughs> Bill. Yes. Bill, Eddie just signed Tootsie Sagwell to a movie contract. What? Tootsie and Eddie's picture? Yeah. Oh, gee, Eddie, I better send you some swan soap. Some so What for? Well, if you're going to be washed up in pictures, I want it to be with swan. <laughs> swan is four swell soaps in one. Soap for your dishes, light laundry for bathing the baby, and for your bath or complexion. Go away. Will you go away? Well, Eddie, what's the matter? Don't you believe that swan is four soaps in one? Look, I'll make it five. Put ketchup on it, and I'll eat it. <laughs> Oh, no, I wouldn't advise that, Eddie. But just try Swan for baiting the baby. Swan is pure as fine cast eels. Doctors recommend it. Because Swan is so mild and gentle, it's kind even to a baby's tender skin. And if Swan is that mild, well, it must be a great complexion soap for grown-ups, too. Bill, my son, listen to me. I'm not a young man anymore. In fact, I'll never see 30 again. <laughs> I've lived a long time, and I've formed certain habits, some good, some bad, but, but they're habits I can't break. 
Eating is one of them. <laughs> now, will you get out of here? Well, sure. Why didn't you say you were hungry, Eddie? I'll go. Oh, Bill, Bill, just a minute. Maybe Mr. Catter will put you in a picture. Gracie picture? <laughs> oh, what an idea. Listen, I'll be the new child boy age. Get this, kid. Ah, oh, Eddie, the Casbah. I used to like the Casbah. Now I like the Swan Bar. <laughs> Breaks in two. Use half in the kitchen for the dishes and light laundry, and half in the bathroom for the shower. <laughs> Eddie, I love. Well, there's your leading man, Eddie. You can start shooting any time. If I only had a gun. <laughs> well, listen, we'll sign the contract later. Got to break this news to Luella Parson. No? Now, can we eat? Well, um, I like the candles. Got a match there. No, I have I'll light them. I'll light them. <laughs> there. Well? Oh, it's the telephone. Blow out the candles, George. <laughs> it's murder. It's murder. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, he's there. Eddie, it's for you. Carry me over to the telephone. <laughs> yeah, here's the here's phone. Here's the Eddie. phone. Hello? Oh, hello, Ida. Gee, I'm glad you're back. Yes, yeah, yes, I'll be right home. George and Gracie invited me to stay for dinner, but I'd rather have something to eat. <laughs> See you in a minute, Ida. Goodbye. Wait a minute, Eddie, Eddie. Now that you're going, uh, I might as well tell you the truth. We haven't got a bit of food in the house. What? Yeah, that's right, Eddie. You kind of caught us with our points down. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me? Get your hats and come on home with me. Our icebox is always loaded. Oh, no, we couldn't do that. Come on, Ida. Be tickled to see you. You know Ida. Oh, Ida. Yeah. Well... Hello, Ida. Eddie, darling. Look who's here. Why, George Gracie, I'm so glad to see you. I invited them over here for dinner. <laughs> Eddie, I'd like to see you in the kitchen for a minute. <laughs> Come on, dear. The shrimp is still in the broom closet. <laughs> George and Grace will be back in a second, and I'm just going to stay here long enough to remind you gals that your good lingerie, your best stockings, and your fine woolen things must really last a long time nowadays. So better give them the best care you can. And to me, that means washing them with Swan, the new white floating soap. Swan is so mild and gentle, it'll give your fine things the kind of washing that avoids unnecessary wear and tear. Look, it stands to reason that if Swan's kind to a baby's skin, it's going to be kind to fabrics, too. And incidentally, kind to your hands while you're doing your light laundry. Swans are swell by any time, a great buy in wartime. Well, here they are again, America's lovable Mr. and Mrs. George and Gracie. Hurry up, Gracie. Hurry up and lock the door. I'm hungry for that shrimp. All right, dear. The key is here in my purse somewhere. It's a compact, a lipstick. Well, look what's here. Huh. A book full of racing stamps. I forgot I had them. Oh. <laughs> Makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your CBS station again next week, same time, when we'll have as our guest, Pat O'Brien. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. And now, next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night. Know what they're all saying? Your ration points go farther. Go further. Go farther. Your ration points go farther. Further when you're cooking with fries. Yes, ma'am. Fries the buy. For fried food, mm. cake, mm. and pie, mm. it's got to be fries. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to remember. And oh, what a buy. Just tell your grocer, I want fries. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.